Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. I've been using a Canon R5 mirrorless camera for around the last six months. And I've made a few videos about my experience and my results. What I'd like to do here is to show some images taken with the R5, talk through some of those images and where appropriate the settings that were used, and maybe we can add a little general photographic information as well. Now, full disclosure here, I'm coming at this as an amateur photographer of senior years, but I have had a camera of some type in my hands now for over 50 years. So I can't pick up a camera as sophisticated as the Canon R5 at lunchtime and have a full grasp of all of its options and menus by tea time. I much prefer a slow, little and often approach to any learning these days, and I think most others do too. My photographic goals these days is to try to come away from every photographic trip I make with at least a few images that I would be willing to show to other photographers. Even when I consider that photo trip to be a little bit of a failure, maybe because of the lighting, the weather in general, or maybe my subject just didn't show up. I'm thinking wildlife here. And that happens, right? So if you can go home with a couple of good shots in situations that are far from perfect, I think you're doing okay. With my style of photography and subjects, the time of day and what day I decide to go out with the camera often has a much greater impact on the success of any images captured than the equipment that I'm using. This image was taken at a place called Sturmer's Creek, just on sunset. The time of day provides a number of advantages. We have changeable conditions at this time from a day that was mostly blanket grey and dull. Easy to tell yourself that this is a day to stay at home. Now it's not uncommon to see these last minute weather and light changes just around sunset, but of course they're not guaranteed. The lighting is very soft and with that sky breaking up, we do have interest and appeal that we can capture. Now we just need to find a good composition and perhaps if we're lucky, some leading lines, in this case to take us to the dog walker. This is taken from the same beach and I think it's important to move around to find different viewpoints and compositions. To speed things up, try setting your automatic exposure bracketing on the camera. So you save time by not having to continually evaluate the exposure as you're moving around. There's classic composition here with the strip of sand corresponding to the bottom rule of thirds line and the red sky sitting nicely where the vertical and horizontal composition lines will cross. A strong point. I have the same type of composition with this shot and again it's the same beach, same evening. Looking at the images, mostly were taken within a 20 minute window so we do have to move pretty quickly on a fairly large beach. The appeal I think with this image is the warm setting sun and the cooler blue colours we see out to sea and that provides a nice colour contrast. Tide times are always important because they make such a difference to the image and here it's perfect to show the flat wet sand reflecting the colours nicely. The couple and their dog, well they are a bonus, they add scale and also a story. All the images taken at Sturmer's Creek were taken from a tripod, but to be honest that was more due to my old habits rather than it being essential. All of the images were taken at 100 ISO, 
But of course, increasing the ISO just a little bit and bringing the shutter speed up means that all of the images that I shot could have been taken handheld. If we are on a beach without a tripod, generally speaking, it's the movement of us that we need to reduce. And that's where the R5's in-body and lens stabilization works in our favor. I really like how the quality of the 45 megapixel resolution of the Canon R5 can be seen when I bring my images onto the computer screen. And the RAW files are really great to work with. Now when we're in a situation where we do have lower light levels and a tripod is needed, the Canon R5 helps us there too. The flip out LCD allows us to see what we're taking, even when the tripod is very low down or quite high up. What I tend to do is to set the automatic exposure bracketing along with the continuous shooting mode and I'll also set the self timer to two seconds. With the touch focus and shutter release set up for touch operation on the LCD, all I have to do is to touch the screen where I want the lens to focus. It'll snap into focus and two seconds later, the self timer will fire. All three of my automatic exposure bracketed shots will be taken. It's almost too easy. One of the things I've been asked about the R5, mainly from SLR users, is how different is the viewing of the scene via the viewfinder monitor, rather than seeing through the lens at the actual scene as we do with an SLR. Well, of course it is different, but not that much. And after a couple of weeks, you're not even going to notice it. What you will notice is how silent the shutter is in comparison to an SLR. Now both this image and the previous one was taken pre-sunrise in Torbal, which is north of Brisbane. The sun isn't quite up yet, and once again it's the time of day chosen to shoot the images that is the most important factor. Far more important than the settings used or the lens chosen. Here though, the flexibility of that 24 to 105 millimeter zoom has helped me to get good classic composition. Now I've mentioned that my own personal preference sometimes is to shoot from a tripod even in conditions when it's not absolutely necessary. Sometimes it is convenient, especially when you're not far from the car. Here's a good example where this was shot from a tripod, but it could have been handheld. A 250th of a second shutter speed at f8 using a 24mm lens is no problem to handhold. I was saying earlier on in this video that sometimes things don't happen as we had hoped for when we go out to shoot wildlife. Wildlife just doesn't always play ball. Now this session could be described like that. Given the static nature of the spoonbills, at the time, I didn't know that my subject would be so static that morning. It's dawn and the birds could have flown at any time. For this static shot, I didn't really require 2000 ISO or that 3200 of a second shutter speed. But if the birds had suddenly flown, I was ready for them with all the right settings. The Canon R5 already has a very good reputation with bird photographers. Its focusing abilities really do make a difference, and there are a number of focus options you can choose from to suit your subject. Now I would never claim to be an expert with birds, but even I'm getting some pretty good results. This image, like the previous, didn't really need these high speed settings, but had these birds flown, I would have been ready for them. In all my years with a digital SLR, I've never used custom functions, but I am now with the Canon R5. With a quick press of the mode button and a rotation of the dial around it, 
I can have my favourite settings for birds in flight set up in an instant. Here's why. During this photo shoot, this was about the only bird that was in flight. And when you're set up and ready, the R5 is going to help you to grab that shot. Now we can see that 2000 ISO has allowed me to use 3000 hundredths of a second, which was needed in this situation. Perhaps in hindsight, I may have got away with just 1000 ISO, which would have reduced the shutter speed perhaps to something like 16 hundredths of a second, but I can't be sure if that shutter speed would have been enough to freeze the movement. Probably, but there's some doubt. My motto is pretty simple. A sharp image with a little noise is something we can deal with. A blurred shot caused by a too slow a shutter speed isn't. This is not a macro shot, but it was close focus, taken with the Canon RF 100mm macro lens. From a lighting point of view, I chose the right day, but it was also a windy day, and that gave me a problem with my subjects moving about in that wind. The in-body and lens stabilisation of the Canon R5 helps keep the camera and lens steady, but of course it doesn't help much when the subject, in our case a flower, is moving. F11 was needed here to get the depth of focus necessary to cover the width of the flower, and 1250th of a second was needed to freeze the movement caused by the wind. Those two settings made 2000 ISO necessary. Here, f8 and one hundredths of a second shutter speed was just enough to handhold and get the critical part of the shot sharp. But once again, I still needed 2000 ISO to be able to achieve this. The noise generated by the Canon R5 using a high ISO is pretty good. And once we add a little noise suppression in Photoshop, Lightroom or your chosen editor, noise really isn't the big issue to deal with it once was. My view is let's avoid noise if we can by keeping our ISO as low as possible, but let's not allow too much concern for noise to hamper our image shooting in the first place. The leaves here are a much more robust plant, so they were less affected by the breeze. That enabled me to use just a 50th of a second at f8, but once again I still needed that 2000 ISO to achieve that. This is the type of subject where we should consider returning on a still day, but it's not always possible is it? So it's nice to know how well the R5 will handle slow shutter speeds and higher ISO settings. These next handheld seascapes were taken at dawn in Malulabar on the Sunshine Coast of Australia. The forecast for the day was cloudy and rain, but those are the days that often start off with the most interesting light and the most interesting conditions. It's why I was there. However, the rain started a lot earlier than I anticipated and it did look like a downpour was imminent. So getting all of the gear out of the car with the tripod and walking onto the beach was not a good idea. Yet the pictures were worth taking. I decided to rely on the in-body and lens stabilisation with my 15 to 35mm lens and handhold just one camera. I could then get onto the beach knowing I could get to cover quickly if it was needed. With the previous image I managed to get a sharp shot hand holding at 1 6 of a second and I've got my seascape sharp from foreground to background. It's much the same story here. I did have to increase the ISO to 400, but that's quite a moderate increase. F5, as you can see here, 
is enough to get the image sharp from foreground to background. If you focus about a third of the way in, then everything is going to be in focus. And with the in body and lens stabilization, a 20th of a second was adequate. Look at the focal length though, 21 millimeter. You can see the importance of being at the right place at the right time. Of course, when we get up for a dawn shoot, we're never entirely sure because most of the time we're getting up and leaving home in the dark. Here it's paid off, albeit that the rain was a little threatening, but it's also provided a dramatic sky and changeable conditions. Just traveling light with the camera body and one lens, you can dodge around the beach or wherever you're shooting and have a reasonably quick route back to the car. Now, once you've found a nice location and assuming you can get back there another day, then give it a go. I made a calculated decision here that because we had a very nice sunset the night before, I hoped it was an omen for a good dawn the next day. It was. Here conditions allowed the tripod to be used. I was quite close to the car. So 100 ISO was selected and a 25th of a second at f5.6 is enough here with a 15 millimeter lens on the R5 to get the sharpness from foreground to background. These conditions were perfect for the technique I was talking about earlier. Flip out the LCD screen on the side of the Canon R5, touch the screen about a third of the way into the scene, the lens will focus, and two seconds later, the camera's self timer will fire off my three bracketed exposures. F22 allows us to slow that shutter speed to 3.2 seconds, more than enough to create the water movement, no filters required. Using a 100 ISO, I have no noise issues here to worry about. And if I didn't want to carry the tripod, all of these shots could have been taken handheld. Perhaps not with the water movement, of course, but they could have been handheld. Now this style of video is a little different to my norm. So if you find it has merit, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. My next Canon R5 video will be on the subject of the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter zoom but used handheld with a two times converter. So we're going to be shooting birds with a lens up to 1000 millimeter. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel, and see how I got on. We'll have to push that ISO, but how far is the question? Let me end this video with a few of the other images I've shot in recent days with the Canon R5. I'll see you next time.